Hey guys, Quentin from FanDroid.com here with our review of the HTC Droid Incredible 2 for Verizon Wireless. The original Droid Incredible was a great phone and was probably one of the best phones on the market last year, but Verizon and HTC have built upon that, but they've also taken away a couple of things that you might be disappointed in. For starters, the screen is now 4 inches compared to 3.7 inches as before. It's also the same resolution at 480 by 800. Another big omission is the lack of a optical trackpad. Instead, there's just a set of four capacitive buttons for home menu back and search. And you can only see those when the device is powered on. To the left is your volume marker up and down switch and then your micro USB port right here for charging and data sync. And on the right there is nothing. On the bottom you have your microphone hole for voice calls and recording. And then on the top there's another microphone for uh, noise cancellation. To the left of that is your 3-5mm headphone jack and your power button. Up top is the VGA camera that does video calling and self portraits. On the back is an 8 megapixel camera capable of recording HD video and to the right is your dual LED flash. And then to the right of that is your speaker grill. Here's your HTC logo and then the with Google logo bottom down here. You can see that the design on the battery door is a bit different from the one on the original. There's only one level of indentation compared to two. There are also a couple more holes on the bottom and then on the top of the device, which we're not sure what they're for. Inside is a 1 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon processor with an Adreno 205 GPU, 768 megabytes of RAM, and 1 gig of internal storage. It also has a 16 gig micro SD card pre-installed. There's a slot at the bottom of the phone here to pry the battery door off, which you just slip your fingernail under and pull. Underneath is a 1430mAh battery, which gives pretty, pretty good battery life. And underneath the battery is actually a SIM card slot, but it's not for 4G LTE. This is actually a global phone, and you'll be able to use your phone when you travel abroad. On the bottom left is your SD card slot, and this is pre-installed with a 16 gig micro SD card. Verizon chose to go with the Super LCD display, but it doesn't look that bad compared to other ones such as Super AMOLED and Super AMOLED Plus. It's pretty crisp and is great in direct sunlight with great brightness. The colors also look very accurate. The device isn't that heavy at all, but it's not that light either. It doesn't feel cheap, but it doesn't feel like it's a brick. Not as much as bigger phones. And it's also not that thick, even with the battery door sticking out here. Although we would have preferred if Verizon kept the optical trackpad for navigation, HTC Sense does a good enough job with that anyway. We also would have hoped for an HDMI port somewhere along the bottom here, but that's because the multimedia experience on this device isn't that great. The internals may not sound like much on paper, but they do a great job of running HTC Sense in Android 2.2. Qualcomm's Adreno 205 GPU is great for gaming performance, which we'll look at in another video. And the amount of RAM and internal storage is enough to make sure your apps run smoothly and to make sure you have enough room to install those apps. And if you run out of room, you always have that micro SD card. The hardware is pretty ordinary, but you would come to expect that from all HTC phones. They just don't look that much different from each other. One extraordinary thing I like, though, is when you're inside of an application and you rotate the device. You can see that the buttons rotate as well. This is a neat trick and not the biggest thing in the world but you do come to appreciate that. So hardware is only half the experience. We need to take a look at the software so let's get to it. The Droid Incredible 2 is an HTC Sense device. It's running on Android 2.2.1 but we expect it to be upgraded to Gingerbread in the future. And this isn't the absolute latest version of HTC Sense which will be 2.1 but it is a fairly recent version. As you can see when I scroll down you have your Recent, most recently used applications here at the top which you can scroll through. HTC keeps things rolling with an abundance of widgets and applications to make sure you can get things done. Verizon has also kept their crop of pre-installed applications with Vcast, VZ Navigator, Kindle, Blockbuster and more. And you can see here that you can use 3G Mobile Hotspot with up to 5 devices on this one. Another pre-installed application is Skype but this is not the version with video. Verizon still has yet to release that one. HTC still allows you to customize your device with skins, scenes, and a nice selection of wallpapers to put on your desktop. And of course, HTC Leap returns so that lets you look at your home screens in one fell swoop and even edit the arrangement of them. Even being able to do all the things that you can do with HTC Sense, I've never once experienced slowdown or sluggishness or any freezing or reboots. 
I'm not sure if that's due to the stability with HTC Sense or if it's because of the internals, but either way, I like it. HTC Sense hasn't evolved that much from the last time we've seen it, but there is one thing I have not seen before, and that's the ability to customize these tabs at the bottom. As you can see here, I'm on a Verizon specific tab that shows you all of their apps. But if I were to go and hold that tab, I can remove it. And it's no longer there. The social networking features in HTC Sense aren't great, but they should suffice for light users. Power users will likely get their applications from the Android market. Overall, HTC Sense has a lot more than I remember it having, but even with that, it still looks great, runs great, and there are a lot of customization options with widgets, wallpapers, and more. Now let's take a look at the multimedia experience on this device. The music experience on the Jordan Incredible 2 is okay, but not the greatest, and that's only if you're not using headphones. If you want to output sound to this little speaker here, it just doesn't sound great. It just makes music sound very empty, very tinny, and doesn't make me want to listen to the music. I tried to improve the experience with the sound enhancer, but it didn't do much. As you can see, I was already on SRS enhancement. You can only use the equalizer when headphones are plugged in. If you use Vcast Music, Verizon allows you to jump straight into the application from the music app. Other music listening options include FM radio, but you do need headphones for it to work. Slagger, but you may need to buy an account and via connected media, but this doesn't work as well as it should. For instance, this is supposed to be DLN enabled, so whenever I press music, I'm supposed to be able to see the music that's being streamed from my computer. After a bit of searching though, I can only see my phone as the player, even though I do see my computer on my Xbox 360. I did a bit of research to look into this issue and I came up with a solution. Buy a new TV. They say you need a DLNA connected TV to be able to use this feature, but that shouldn't be the case. I didn't have a chance to load any of my own videos on here, but here's a YouTube video to show you just how video playback looks. Video looks great, but the sound still ruins the experience. I can't get over that. Let's talk a bit about the camera on this device. So as I mentioned before, there are two options. You have a back 8 megapixel camera with HD video recording. And then you also have a front facing camera, which you can switch to by pressing the switch camera button in menu. HTC's cameras are known to be quite bad in terms of quality, but they've gotten better over time. Still, they're not up to par with competitors such as Samsung, Motorola, and Sony. To snap a picture, you just touch this sh shutter button right here, and the shutter speed is actually quite fast. The device does have some trouble with focusing, even if you try to help it along, it doesn't quite get it right. The camera works great in daylight, but even in fluorescent lighting, this thing is pretty good. It's in low light situations where you want to start worrying. You won't want to capture your child's memories at their birthday party or any other important memories in low light because this thing will not impress. The dual LED flash on the back works great for smaller rooms, but if you want to capture footage outside in the dark, you will be disappointed. The same can be said for video. Looks great in daylight, looks great in fluorescent lighting, but at nighttime it just isn't worth it. The same can be said for the front facing camera too, although it doesn't look nearly as good inside as it does outside. Taking a look at the camera app, it's still lacking compared to other competitors. You don't have any shooting modes like sports scene or macro mode, but you do have different special effects like distortion and depth of field. These were great for the most part, but I would prefer it if we had more camcorder-like features on this than special effects. You can still change your ISO size, your resolution, and your brightness, saturation, and sharpness. And you can also zoom in and out by using the touch screen, or you can use the volume marker to do that too. Overall, the camera's not going to help you shoot a blockbuster movie, nor will it help you shoot models at a photo shoot but it will be decent enough for your everyday needs. But I wouldn't trust this thing at family events such as weddings or birthday parties. The Jordan Incredible 2 is not a bad successor to the original. It's a very capable device with a much faster processor and GPU, a bigger screen, and a brighter screen at that. It misses that optical trackpad that everyone loves so much, but you shouldn't worry because HTC Sense has great text editing features anyway. It looks great, it works great, and it's pretty cheap for what it does too. The only real negative I have is with the multimedia experience, which I felt could have been better for a device that's 
part of their flagship lineup. You can find the Jordan Incredible 2 at Verizon Wireless for $199.99 after a two-year contract. Be sure to read the full review at Fandroid.com.